Hi everyone, in this video we're going to be learning some more Jimi Hendrix rhythm ideas and now these licks are going to be taken straight out of the song Little Wing. We're going to learn three licks that he uses on major chords, really cool sounding licks that you can get into your own playing and if you're familiar with my other videos on Hendrix rhythm, you'll know that we're not just going to learn the licks, we're going to get stuck right in, we're going to learn how he plays them, how you can move them around the neck, how you can play them in other keys, how you can play them with other chord shapes. Stay tuned and I'll show you how to do it. In this lesson then, we're going to be learning three licks from Little Wing that Hendrix uses when he's doing major chords, but if you haven't done it already, hit like to like the video, hit subscribe to subscribe to the channel, and click that alert bell so you don't miss any updates. If you'd like a PDF workbook with everything that I'm going to cover in this lesson, you'll see a link below in the description. But let's just get stuck right in. Here is lick number one. <laughs> Okay, that is an awesome lick that Hendrix plays when he plays the chord G. Now, just a little side note, obviously if you want to play this along with the original, you will have to tune your strings down a semitone, but for this video I'm doing everything in standard tuning. Okay, so that lick comes in around 39 seconds into the Axis Bold of Love recording of Little Wing. As I said, we're not going to be learning the introduction. If you do want me to cover the introduction, comment below and I will do that at some point. These are just little snippets, and that is the first lick. So what Hendrix does then, obviously it starts with the E minor chord. When he comes to the G, he brings his thumb over the top to play the root note, the third fret on the G string, and he plays this awesome little lick. <laughs> at the top, which is sort of creating like a G add 9 sort of sound. Lovely sounding chord, okay? So, let's not worry about the thumb for now, we'll come back to that. The lick itself, the main part of the lick is this thing. So what we're doing there, we're fretting the 2nd fret on the G, 5th fret on the D string, then we're doing double stops between the G and the B, 2nd fret on the G, 3rd fret on the B. So the start of the lick goes two, five, double stop. Then we play the fourth fret on the G, but keep that middle finger where it is. We're just bringing in our third finger in the fourth fret on the G. So pull off that third finger back to the second fret on the G. And then playing that fifth fret on the D string one more time to finish off the lick. So bit slower. Okay, if you do want to play the thumb, you're gonna to have to, it's quite difficult, but you need to get your thumb over the top. And the, the lick would start, you'd play your thumb at the beginning of the bars, you'd get one, two. And it, it is quite tricky, like I'm, for me that is right on the edge of the limit for my thumb, so if you do have kind of small hands, don't worry too much about the thumb, but if you're blessed with the big hands like Hendrix, you are gonna be able to do that, but don't worry if you can't. So rhythmically the lick goes like this, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So we're coming in on the two and, so we get one and two and. One and two and. And we're playing sixteens. One e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a. One e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a. Okay, so with the thumb we get one and two and three and four. Let's do that with the metronome. Here it is at 60 BPM. Okay, so in that example then, I played the first time I did it, I did it with my thumb, and the second time without your thumb. Up to you, the main thing is this part of the lick that we really kind of... is the cool part of the lick. So when he plays, he does this sort of thing. And then on and on through Little Wings. Like I said, that comes in at 39 seconds in. Now, let's talk about moving that around, getting that into other keys, which is also really important if you want to get it into your own playing. So the way I see this, I see it based around this shape. Okay, so there's my little finger note, which is this part. So I'm kind of taking it from there, and I'm just going to bring my index finger down to the G string in the second fret. My middle finger is going to go onto that note, which is the third fret on the B, which that note is already in our E shape. G major bar chord. So we're kind of taking that, 
and we're going to end up with this sort of bar chord. So fifth on the D, second on the G, third on the B, and then obviously we've got this finger to do the, which is kind of hammering on to this note. Okay, so let's just say we want to take that up to C major then. We're going to take our E shape, C major bar chord like this. I'm going to use the same thing. So that thing is going to stay where it's going to be. My index is dropping to the G, middle to the B, and there's our shape. So with the thumb, it's a little bit more awkward up this high, if you ask me. And it's just, I'm literally seeing it coming off that shape. So if I was to do it in another key up to D, I'd do the same thing. the same trick my little finger is in the right place bring my index down to the ninth fret on the G middle finger is going to be in the same line with that bar was originally and there's the lick C G okay so that one was based off this E shape let's talk about moving it into another shape let's look at it based in this chord now that's how known as our C shape it is a G major Let's see how we can play the lick there, so we can do this thing. Lovely, so if you ever come across this chord and you want to play this lick. So we have a root there on the 10th fret, we're going to be using the notes in the 7th fret, and the 3rd finger is going to be in the 9th fret, so we get this. So 7 on the D, 10 on the A, little double stop between the D string and the G string on the 7th fret, 3rd finger to 9 in the D, pull off, back to where it was in the seventh fret and then hit the root so now obviously you can't do the thumb thing unless you have a enormously long thumb to be able to play this one so you could just play root or leave the root as we did with the other leg or you could just play the root on the tenth fret so you could play it doesn't really matter. The main part of this lick is this really cool. That bit that he plays over that G major chord. So let's just say then you wanted to get a lick like this into a chord sequence. So let's say I took the chords G, E minor, D and C. That sort of thing. Did a bar of each. I could do this kind of idea where I'm playing the lick on the major chords only. Sounds like this. <laughs> Okay, so that's how you could get that lick in into a chord sequence like that. Obviously, I wouldn't do it on every single chord. That's just a little example of how you can do that. And then moving forward for the rest of the licks, you can do exactly the same thing. So let's move on. Here is lick number two. Okay, I absolutely love this lick because it's quite fairly straightforward and easy to move around. This comes in uh, at about 1 minute and 11 on the song. And again, he's playing this over at the G major, but as we will look at, you can move this to any single key. So, root-wise, we're basing ourselves in the same position as the first lick, and we're sort of using the same kind of notes. So we're going to move straight to the second fret on the G and the third fret on the B string. Now, you can either use your middle finger or your third. It doesn't really matter too much. So we get one two three four one two three four okay and what he's just doing he's taking that shape whether you're using your third or your second finger and just going to be sliding it up and down two frets so we get slide up slide back so and then slide up again so that's the first part then we slide up again to where we just were so we get this to where we started so and most of it is slid apart from two picks so what you do then you pick the very first one and then you pick the one in the middle so I pick slide pick slide back so so I'm going pick, pick. 
So let me just play that then a little bit faster. If you want to, you can play the root note. You can just use your middle finger. That's kind of why I normally choose to use my index and my third for that. So we'd get one, two. Okay, so the lick, that part, that comes on the second beat. So we did one, two. So that's normally why I'm using my index and third. Just in case I want to hit that root note, you don't have to. If you do want to, you could just play one. And that's the lick. Let's do that with the metronome. Here it is at 60 BPM. Okay, so when I demonstrated that, the first time round, I played the bass note, the G at the bottom. The second time, I didn't bother. Both sound absolutely great. So let's talk about moving that to some other keys and some other chords. So again, I'm seeing this shape. And then what we're going to do, we're going to do the same sort of things we did before. We're going to be playing that note, which is the second fret on the G, and then this note, which is in our bar. So when I'm visualizing this, I can see this sort of shape. Now, that chord is sometimes handy to visualize. That's like a, a G add nine. So here's our regular G chord, and we can just play that second fret on the G there. And then we're simply sliding it up and down two frets. So if you move this to C, as we did before, let's get up to the C, and I'm seeing this. So this time our index is on the 7th fret on the G, and then our middle or our 3rd is going to be on the 8th fret on the B. Coming right off that sort of shape. So anytime I see that shape, I know I can play this lick. If we did do it in D. A, G. So visually, when you can see this chord, this lick stuck to this chord, it makes it a lot easier to move around the fretboard and use in other keys and other songs. So let's talk about moving it to another shape. Let's do the same thing as we did before. Let's move it to our C shape. So we just need to get, which happens to be between the seventh and the ninth fret on the D and the G string like this. And I kind of like it there because the tone is a little bit warmer because we're using the thicker strings. Okay, so do you hear there then? They both sound the same. Just one sounds a little bit brighter than the other due to the nature of the strings that we're going to be playing them on. It's up to you which one you use. It just might depend where you are in your chord sequence in relation to voicings, etc, etc. Or you might just prefer the sound of the other one. Both are cool. Up to you which one you use. Let me just do a little jam now with the same chords I did before. The G, E minor, D and C. And I'm going to incorporate that lick into the song this time. <coughs> Okay, so that was just a quick demonstration showing you how you can do that. Obviously, I wouldn't play it every single time like that, but that's just showing you an example of how you can move these licks that Hendrix played to other keys and other chords. Right then, let's move on. Here is lick number three. Okay, so this is the lick that Hendrix plays around about the 57, 58 seconds mark in from the Axis Board of Love record. And it's moving from the G to the F chord, and he's using this awesome shape that I've shown you in one of the other videos. So the thing with this lick, I feel like what he's kind of doing, he's kind of just going. He's just moving between those two chords using that shape and doing some other trills. So the original lick sounds like this super slow, so he sort of plays. So he's sort of playing a little trill there with his little finger. And then the main part of the lick kind of when it moves down to the F is that is those stabs on that 
chord. Now, what I've just done then, rather than learning the lick 100% exact, which is more difficult to use in other keys, I'm going to take an idea, I'm going to sort of use that as our base for a lick, and we're going to play this sort of thing instead, which pretty much sounds exactly the same, so it sounds like this. Okay, still sounds super Hendrixy, and it's basically taking this idea, it's just allowing us to move that around, and also it's a little bit easier and less fussy. The way Hendrix plays it is amazing, and that's just almost, again, a lot of the times when I'm learning Hendrix stuff, I look at, okay, how's he done it? I'll learn it the same and see, is it a slightly easier version that allows me to sort of use it on other styles? Because of course, Jimmy is the master of this sort of stuff. So let's grab that chord then. So we're gonna be bringing our thumb over the top again for this one. Again, if you can't do that, don't worry, just play the rest of the lick. So thumb over the top on the third fret on the E string, and we're gonna be playing the rest of kind of like the E shape, so the D string. Fourth on the G, little bar then with the th first finger in the third fret. And then we're going to be doing a hammer on and a pull off onto the fifth fret on the G. So from the four to the five, back to the four. So, so we're going to play root, strum the chord, hammer on, pull off, and strum the chord again. Very similar to some of the licks we've learned earlier in the series. Okay, so. Bit slower. Three, four, one. So even slower again this time. So three and four and one and two. So that trilly bit, if you like, that part, that comes on the two. So we get one, two, one, two. And then we're just going to take this shape and move it downwards, but we're going to be playing that full Hendrixy kind of chord that you hear from Castle Made of Sand, Little Wing, etc., etc. So it's thumb over the top, third finger in the third fret on the D, first finger in the first fret on the B, little finger then in the third fret on the high E, and it sounds like this. And we're going to be doing that. We're going to be playing one and so two down strums. So. And a little bit slower. I love playing this, I think it sounds amazing. That chord, when you get to that bit, sounds so good. If you want to, just to emulate a little bit more like the original lick, put a mute in between, like this. So I'm just doing an up strum, just carrying on, it doesn't really matter what you hear. So there, slowly. Okay, so even slower and do a super slow just to show you that mute is. So basically, I'm keeping my arms sort of moving in 16th for this. I'm going down, 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 and then up is the muted one. And then that on that F, add nine is down, down, so down. Down, down, up, down, down. And then in the original lick, Hendrix does this. Where he's playing like an open G string. He hits this root, he hits that root. But essentially, we can just kind of strum the chord like this. And it sounds just as good. So let me put that together with the first part. So. Lovely. So nice and slow from the beginning. Let's do that with metronome. Here it is at 60 BPM. Now, if you can't do your thumb, don't worry. You can just do the lick like this. So you could go one. Still sounds great. So just don't worry about the thumb if you can't do it. Just don't bother with that note and just play the rest of the lick. Now, obviously, as we've changed the lick a little bit, you can means you can move it to other keys. So if I wanted to do it between a D and a C, similar to the song that I've been jamming through the rest of this video, I could do this thing. Okay, so by making the lick a little bit more simple, it just allows us to move it around the neck a bit easier and also utilize it in songs. So if I was to use this in a song then, so the thing I've been jamming around has been G, E minor, D to C. As the lick 
is one bar long, I would just have to start it halfway through the bar. So rather than starting on the beginning of the bar when I was to move to a D, I just start after two beats. So one, two, three, four, one. And it works like that. So again, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then back to a one. I'll show you what I mean. I'll jam it through now. Here is that song I've been playing, G, E minor, D and C. Here we go, one, two. showing you then how you can incorporate that lick into a chord sequence so what i'm going to do now then i'll do the same chord sequence again but i'm going to play a mixture of all of the licks that we've learned in this video lick number one lick number two lick number three and i'll put them sporadically through the chord changes it all sounds like this Okay, so that was me just jamming around with some chords using some of the licks that we've done from this video. As I said, if you would like the workbook with all of this stuff written out, you'll see a link below in the description, so make sure you grab that workbook. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed everything in that video. If you did, hit like to like the video, click subscribe to subscribe to the channel, and hit that alert bell so you don't miss any updates. As I said, workbook, make sure you grab that. If you'd like some more lessons from myself, I have loads of other lessons on my YouTube channel. You'll see loads of other Hendrix ones, and I definitely recommend you go back to lesson one and work in all the way through to this lesson. Also, I have an online guitar school called Fretlix, www.fretlix.com. Loads of great courses and lessons guaranteed to help you become a better guitarist. Hope you enjoyed that video and I'll see you again soon.